Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants out 53 degrees north. And it's Good Friday today as I'm filming this. And it's going to be a nice day. We've got nice warm weather at the moment. I know it's uh, expected to turn cooler. But I'm going to have a look today at my Bougainvillea plant and have a little chat about that. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's just get started. Okay, so we're in. So, first of all, just before we, we start on the Bougainvillea, I have recently done like a kind of a controversial video. I thought it was as balanced as it could be. It certainly wasn't having a go at anybody. Uh, I was just really trying to get to the bottom of where, I mean, purely selfish, I guess, really, where I can find, you know, the, the best source of information on orchids and on plants and I tried to make it clear anyway that I wasn't disparaging against anybody and in actual fact the first place I go uh, is YouTube <laughs> despite putting it kind of halfway down my list in terms of reliability uh, what I didn't consider and a couple of people did put this in the comments uh, was what I actually do, which is I get my information from a variety of sources and then bearing in mind that my conditions are my conditions, nobody else has my specific conditions uh, I then do trial and error with it. Lots of error as you've probably seen and that's something else to, to bring up, you know um, I've only been growing tropical plants now for, it's just I would say just over a year and really it's probably less than that because you don't you know you don't start with a full greenhouse and um, I've had lots of trials and tribulations along the way and this is what I started with my uh, when I started YouTube it was to kind of uh, chronicle my journey in learning these things I've been growing temperate plants outside for many many years but and I've still lot to learn there, but you know, you're always learning out you but as far as tropical plants goes, in a greenhouse, I'm growing these things in a place that they don't want to grow, and I'm trying to replicate those conditions. And I'm growing species of plants, genera of plants which I've never grown before from other parts of the world um, that, that are suited to the, the local conditions. And as I say, I'm trying to replicate those conditions. So I hope you can kind of bear with me that uh, a lot of my videos are going to be along the lines of look this is going wrong how can I get this right this is what I've read this is what I've found out or what I think I've found out bearing in mind that we can't always verify the sources of these information of these bits of information but this is what I've found out and this is what I'm going to try and if it doesn't work I'll try something else and that's the kind of approach that I'm trying to take as you can see, a quick glance around the greenhouse, not everything is failing. Some of these plants, uh, you know, I think I've kind of cracked, I know what to do with them. Some of these plants have failed in the past and I've since recovered based on what I've done with them. And if we just whisk through to the warm side, same over here, they're not all total failures. You know, some of these things are doing particularly well. Some by accident as well, I have to say. Like the Mandevilla there in the corner. Uh, I've not done anything special with that. It's still in the pot I bought it in. It's, it's about, I don't know, it's getting on for 12 months old. Um, I've not done anything particular with it. Uh, Zygopedalum, that is about to bloom. I will take full credit for that. <laughs> I'll take full credit for anything that uh, I have managed to recover because it, it did start to rot and I managed to recover that one so anyway yeah this is about Bougainvillea today so let's come back come back through here and as I say I'm, I'm choosing the ones the plants that aren't doing particularly well uh, with the hopes that other people will learn from you know from me as well so I might title my video you know how to care for a Bougainvillea but that's not me saying look I know how to do it this is me saying, well, this is what I found out. I've got one. This is what it's doing. Perhaps we can compare and contrast and see what's going wrong with it. 
So I'll just tell you a bit of a story about this. This, this Bougainvillea, um, it's Bougainvillea brasiliensis, apparently in the UK there's one species of Bougainvillea that's being sold over here and a couple of hybrids. So this is one of the hybrids. Now I had a lot of trouble with this, uh, with, with the supplier of this actually. There, there was a, a, one specialist supplier that I found uh, in the UK on the web and as it turned out they took me money and then I heard nothing from them for a very long time it was several weeks and they promised that it would be sent and so on and anyway cut a long story short they, they ended up uh, almost complaining to me as to you know why was I pushing them on it because they were short staffed etc etc now don't forget this this was you know this is almost 12 months ago this was not to do with the COVID-19 crisis um, anyway like I say that I had problems right from the start when it came it seemed to be in reasonable condition it was about a foot tall when it came it's still in the same pot and I just put it there where it is now and it's been there all along it initially grew and then it stopped growing and it turned out that Bougainvillea don't like to be watered a lot so I stopped watering it uh, quite as much and then it started growing again and then it stopped again and I discovered that Bougainvillea even though it's in a it's in a pot with a tray underneath uh, but they they don't like to sit in any kind of water either so I lifted it up off its pot so that it would drain through and that got it going again and it's been fine all winter it's dropped the odd leaf they are evergreen supposedly and they can apparently go down to two degrees they won't take frost but they can keep the leaves all year if you keep them to a minimum of 10 which i did for most of the winter as i say didn't really drop that many leaves however we're now in growing season the temperature in here is minimum of about 13, 14 at night time, yet rather than start to grow vigorously, which it's supposed to be doing, it's doing the opposite. And the leaves look dreadful, it keeps dropping leaves, it's showing no signs of growth, it's not happy is it? Look at it. So some of the information that i have gleaned from various sources on the web some youtubers uh, some uh, i think i got so one of it was the rhs which you know i said was uh, a quite a credible source and i kind of compared and contrasted those different sources of information and kind of come up with a consensus most of them i'll be honest said the same things there wasn't really anything that was glaringly obviously different between them so in the UK, I mean obviously they, they don't grow as a rule in the UK, I've never seen one growing in the UK unless it's in a warm conservatory, a heated greenhouse performs the same function. They like to be root bound, slightly root bound. We've said temperatures, minimum night time of 10, daytime of above 18. Uh, grow them in a warm sunny position. They can, if you get them right, they can flower for 10 months. Actually, it's not the flower, it's a bract that provides the colour. The, the flower is a tiny little thing, a little white thing right in the centre of the bract. You can prune them quite hard, originate from South America. They want to be planted in a John Innes number three, which I don't have. I have a number two, Let's see if that will do. You can feed them regularly from April, you can repot them if, if necessary. They do like to be root bound and it's uh, you've got to guard against over potting. So the question I have, or the question I want to discuss kind of with myself here, talk it through and if anybody's got any uh, pearls of wisdom to add to it, I will be very, very grateful to hear from you. What have I done wrong? What's going wrong with it? Well, it can be susceptible to aphids, mealybugs, spider mites. Actually, I've not checked for spider mites. I've not seen any mealybugs on it. They're quite obvious, aren't they, normally? I've certainly not seen any aphids. I'm just kind of getting close up here. I can't see anything in terms of spider mites. There's nothing on there. I'll just give it a, give a leaf a little rub with my finger. 
No, nothing on my fingers, completely clean. No powdery brown stuff. So I don't think it's spider mite. I don't think it's the temperatures. I did read that even though they're like a warm, sunny, bright position, if it's behind glass, obviously you've got to be careful that they're not directly um, in the line of fire, as it were. Well, I've got the shades up, so it's not that. The aspect at the moment is, let me just work this out, so it's kind of west facing. So they don't get loads of sunshine there. It is in a bright position. Uh, so I don't think that's the issue. I can't see any signs of virus or anything like that. Which brings me down to the pot. Now, the pot is lifted up. I'm letting it dry out. I watered it a couple of days ago because it was dry. And I'm leaving it dry for a few days. You see under there, there's one or two leaves that have fallen off. Can't see anything on there really. No. So my thoughts are, well, could there be a blockage in the pot? Because I've never looked inside that pot. I believe they do like it like a clay pot. Don't know why, but it, that was uh, like an anecdotal bit of advice. So I might try and transplant it. They don't like really to be repotted, but when you're in the state where it is now, where it's clearly not thriving, it's clearly ailing, you've got to do something. They prefer to be root bound in the pots. So I'm going to try it in a clay pot, if I can find one that's the right size. Does it have, and again, this is this time of year, it's possible that there could be, I uh, can't remember the name, vine weevil. Is there a vine weevil in the pot? They don't like the roots disturbing, but again, like I say, when it's failing, there's not a lot you can do. I can't really repot it there with, with all this growth on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it, chop it down to a bud about there and we're going to start again because you know it's clearly not not working as it is there's something going on and it's only really if I can get down into the pot and have a look that I can see if I can figure it out I'm just disinclined looking at the, all the burr stems there and the little bit of poor growth at the top I'm disinclined to carry on with it like this. It would probably do better in the warm side, to be honest, but there's no room really for that kind of size plant. And I want it here. And if the things that I've read are correct about it, you know, a minimum, I keep it a minimum of 12, that should be fine. That shouldn't be a problem. So that's what we'll do. I'll take it down. I will prune it down, get in the pot, and I shall show you when we're at that stage. <clears throat> okay, so the deed is done. I've tried to cut it, I'll prune it down to outward facing buds because well, I thought that was that was an outward facing bud. That's an inward facing bud. Must have twisted around, that one is. It's difficult actually because these that look like buds are little spines and the the prunings of this I mean it seems perfectly healthy that you know in terms of how it's it's very green inside so that's a good sign uh, these spines are very sharp and strong and that's how it kind of climbs up things it does have little buds on it all the way along but you know you could see the state of the leaves there was no reason for them to all kind of crinkle up and start to drop there's something going on and I'm not sure what it is I have spent many many happy hours over in Spain and the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean and uh, the Canary Islands as well looking at these plants and you know what wow what a what a fantastic sight they look like when they're in full in full bloom and they can bloom for a long long time 
So, I guess I'm hoping I find something in this pot that answers my question. So, Bougainvillea brasiliensis. Let's see. I didn't write on that again at that point when I bought this. I wasn't writing on them when I bought them. So there's only one way to find out. So let's take this off. I am hoping I find a vine weevil because at least that will give me an answer. I mean, it does look, it looks wet at the moment. Now, these do not like root disturbance. It's not like an orchid. I wondered whether these these holes were getting uh, some, you know, like blocked up in some way. And that was a reason why. Well, there's no there's no drainage. That's the first thing. So is it it is possible that. I mean, it feels quite wet. Is it that I'm overwatering it? The roots look all right. The roots look absolutely fine, and there's new growth on them. There's no vine weevil in that, is there? That's a decent root ball. Maybe it's not drying out enough. Maybe the I'm seeing the top layer dry out, and underneath is still wet. I would like to see some drainage because you do find with these kind of pots even when they're raised up that the holes somehow kind of get clogged and it doesn't release the water that's why we tend to put crocs in the bottom of a pot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look for a similar sized clay pot put some crocs in the bottom of it I'm not going to do anything to that root ball. I might add a little bit of Johnniness number two on top, just to because it's kind of dropping down a little bit on the top there. And we're going to start again. And I, I am, well, I'm not confident, but I'm hopeful because I mean these are new roots. It's not, it's not dying off. It could just well be the most of the roots are near the top. It could just be that again I'm overwatering it. Okay, I shall return. Okay, and we're back. So, <clears throat> found a pot here, a clay pot. It's got a nice hole in the bottom. And I'm going to put object number one in the bottom there. And the idea is then that the, the compost won't clog up at the bottom there, which it does have a tendency to do if you don't put any crocs in. It's one of life's irritations, of which there are many, that people put these shops put these prices on these labels and then you can't get the flipping thing off and I've not got time to soak it I'm all about with it so I'll just have to turn it so that you can't see it it is really irritating when they do that so <clears throat> crock in the bottom they like to be root bound pot bound don't forget so it's pretty much the same size as what we had before It's a little bit of a different shape. It's slightly bigger, but you know, I'm not really going to be able to do a great deal about that. I've no John in this number three. So it'll have to be number two. It's actually, or I find it anyway, more difficult potting a plant into a pot that's only slightly bigger because I know what will happen here when I eventually unpot it again you'll see that the compost is only just round the sides and it's not going right down the bottom I mean, actually, on this pot, it, it does go narrower anyway. The, there's like this st sticky out bit, for want of a better term. I'm sure there's a word for sticky out bit. Projection. 
I want to get this down without damaging these roots. The roots apparently are quite delicate and they don't like to be disturbed. So I've not I've not disturbed the root ball too much, hopefully. Like I say, it's a case of it wasn't thriving, so you try something else, don't you? Now there was some feed, some uh, feed pellets there anyway, so I don't need to put any more on top. I just have to remember that I've already fed it, and it should last a few months, and there should be some feed anyway in the John Innes number two. I'm not going to put this back in. I'm going to leave that off. I'll just see if it grows first. We'll just leave it as it is. I'm right on the label. Put it back where it was, and let's see. So, yeah, if you've got one of these or you've had the experience growing them, please put in the comments whatever you think is wrong with mine and whether you think what I've done with it will make any difference. So that's it for now and I'll see you on the next one.